Hi everyone and welcome back to Kimpo's Comfort Kitchen and today we are going to do uh, Danish chicken thighs with a mushroom sauce. Well, what makes it Danish? Well, what makes it Danish is the fact that my father used to make this. When I was a kid, I've tweaked it a little bit, but essentially it's the same idea with a mushroom sauce, uh, some Madeira sherry in it, and I'm serving it with uh, wood and uh, fingerling potatoes, which are like the long potatoes with a little bit of parsley. Very simple dish, but very much comfort food and um, easy to make. So let's get started. All right, so let's get this show on the road. I'm going to take just a little dollop of avocado oil and put that on each one of these chicken breasts. These are skin on, bone in. They have the most flavor and we want to crisp the skins up when we roast them in the oven. So I'm putting the oil on and you can see that's pretty easy. Just rub them liberally. Now you can use canola as usual as I mentioned before but I prefer avocado and it's not that much more expensive but it's worth it. And I also should mention that I have had these sitting in the fridge uncovered on the bottom shelf so that they dry out a bit. That also gets the uh, crispiness up. So the only thing I'm really going to do this time, sometimes I use panko but I'm not going to this time. I'm just going to put Italian seasoning on the tops of these. I've set the oven to 350 and I have convection, but you don't need it. But before I put them in the oven, I'm going to put them back in the fridge and let them air dry a bit longer. And then I'm going to be placing these into a, there we go, I'll place them in onto a rack and a center, center level in the oven, right? So we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the thighs ready. I've let them chill in the, in the uh, fridge and I've let them also rest for another 15 minutes just to warm up. They're, they're nice and dry now and they should come out quite crispy. He said, with great confidence. Okay, so I'll throw these in the oven and now we're gonna get started on the sauce. All right, as the French would say, let us make the sauce. Because we know at the end of the day, it's okay to make good chicken, good beef, blah, 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 all the rest of it. But the sauce is really what makes it. And I'm putting flour into a warmed pan. And I know a lot of people don't do this anymore. It's very old fashioned, but I always like to cook the flour. And by cook, I mean, just warm it up a bit. I've got the heat on halfway here. And I'm gonna let that sit for a bit before we get started. And as we let that warm up, now if I was to leave this longer, it would actually start to turn brown and then burn, <clears throat> which obviously we don't want. But if I just let this warm up enough, and it starts to cook, it gets, basically the whole purpose of this is to get rid of the uh, floury taste in your sauce. Because some people always complain and say, oh, Oh, you know, my sauce was really great, but it tasted flowery. Well, this is how to get rid of that. Add some butter. And now we're gonna make the roux. And it's 50-50 are the parts for the roux. And today I'm going to use vegetable stock. Now you can use uh, chicken stock. You could even use uh, beef stock if you wanted to. I wouldn't with a chicken dish. But you see how that's starting to thicken up. And as soon as I add the uh, vegetable stock to it, it's going to thicken right away. 
I'm only going to add a little bit. Now, sometimes you also will see people just put flour straight in over top of whatever they're cooking instead of making the roux. I think that this step, personally, if you want a nice smooth sauce, this is crucial. And it's not difficult. It's all about the details. Here we go. You can see how that's starting to thicken as it cooks. And this will be a very, very smooth sauce. Just a little bit. It's most, mostly crucial at the very beginning when you're adding uh, liquid to a roux. You don't want to add too much because then it will lump up. But as you can see right here, this is going to come out just fine. Look at that. I'm going to finish doing this and I'll come back when we're done. All right, so I've turned the heat up a little bit. I had it at half before. And you can see with the vegetable stock that I put in, this is thickening up really nice. This is gonna make for a very smooth, no lump sauce. If you follow these directions, it'll always come out perfect. I believe me, I promise you. A lot of times people are saying, oh, well, it got lumpy and all the rest of it. Well, if you do this, and it'll never be lumpy. So now I've got some buttermilk, very Danish. I'm gonna add that just a little bit at a time. And I've got all the amounts on my website so you don't have to guess. Here we go. I'm gonna let this heat up. I'm putting this to three quarter heat. Because I want this to get relatively warm. But obviously we don't want to burn it. And I haven't seasoned it yet. I always do that at the last. I like to see what everything else is going to taste like first. You know, you can always put salt in, but you can't take it out. Same with pepper or anything else for that matter. And I've got sauteed mushrooms. I've cooked them off. And now I'm going to switch to a wooden spoon. So taken sauteed onions. I always put a little uh, napkin in the bottom when I saute the onions so that I can drain off the oil. Because nobody likes an oily sauce. Look at that. That consistency is getting there. It looks great. Now I'm taking some Marsala. It's about uh, two ounces, well, an ounce. There we go. I should mention that when I was sauteing the uh, onions, I used a little bit of Maggie. Now I should let you know that Maggie does have some MSG in it, but personally, it's not enough to make any difference, so. Right now we're just looking for nice smooth consistency. Yeah, this is definitely getting there. So I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna turn the heat down on this because it's bubbling. I'm gonna let it thicken. I might add just a little bit more buttermilk at this point. And then I'm gonna use another Danish trick which I haven't used in a long time, which is kulua. And if I want my gravy or my sauce to be a little bit darker, I put a little bit of coloring in. It's just aesthetics. 
but you can see when I do this, and you can buy other versions of this in North America, but it just gives it a better look. So I'm gonna let this simmer and we'll be back. Okay, so let's plate. One thing I would like to mention though, which I never have done before, is if you like what you've seen, and you like the recipes, I would really appreciate it if you would like my YouTube, cha YouTube channel, like subscribe to it. Um, it helps me out tremendously. I'm trying to get more subscribers. I'm not gonna like, you know, send you a bunch of crap or anything. The only thing that's gonna happen is that every time I do a new video, you're gonna see, you're gonna get a notification that says, oh, I've got a new video. And you can either look at it or not look at it. So that would be very helpful. And same thing on Facebook. If you see something that you like on Facebook, don't just like it. I mean, I really appreciate it, but it'd be really nice if you would share because, you know, you obviously have a lot more friends than I do. And it would be cool. So, anyway, that's the ask I'm, at, I'm doing right now. So, this is mantle potatoes or matna and fingerling potatoes and the chicken with the sauce. And here's some red cabbage. This is what my thigh used to make. For me when I was a kid and that's it red cabbage roasted uh, chicken thighs mat mat potatoes a little bit of parsley did I mention the sauce the sauce is actually freaking amazing anyway I really hope you guys enjoy and show your support thanks bye